Well, first of all, have a happy, merry, merry Christmas. As you can probably tell this week, given my, my, my T-shirt, we've been been doing a bit of bulk filming. So it's not Christmas when I'm doing this, but it will be when it comes out. So always, guys, have a merry, happy Christmas. My pat's a bit. There we go. It's, there we go. Let's sort this out. <laughs> there we go. But yes, as always, guys, uh, have a very, very happy Christmas. Um, like I say, thank you guys to everyone who has supported the channel throughout all this year. And like I say, uh, thank you to everyone. Um, even if you just hit the like and share button, like I say, have a very happy Christmas today. Enjoy yourselves. Hope you get you know all your, your, your presents from Santa and all that good stuff. But of course, we've still got to talk about Brexit, because if any of you have happened to unwrap an electric car this year, you might have gotten yourselves quite lucky, because it looks like that because of uh, the Brexit tariffs, and indeed because we were promised that certainly after Brexit, the UK would become this massive electric car building place that would be able to supply Europe, um, looks like that's not going to happen as it looks like all those promises have evaporated, as all the Brexit promises have indeed evaporated. And of course, there is now a tariff, a Brexit tariff that will put 10% on the price of electric cars. So that means that electric cars are now going to get more expensive because of this tariff. <laughs> Again, it's not going to be a good look. And it's also, as we said, not a good Christmas once again for Brexit. So over we go today to This Is Money with the title of uh, The Electric Car Prices Set to Rise by 10% from 2024 as Brexit trade tariffs to make them more expensive and delay price parity with petrol and diesel. So many electric vehicles made and sold in the UK and Europe are set to become more expensive from 2024 which will delay the price parity with petrol and diesel cars it has emerged. The manufacturers of the battery-only vehicles have warned that they will be forced to hike prices by 10% or more just over the next 12 months' time due to the introduction of trade tariffs. It comes after Brussels has said that it has no intention of extending any exemption agreed in the Brexit trade deal that is due to expire at the end of the year. And of course, this is partly because of the arguments that have been going on in and around those Brexit trade deals, meaning that as the EU goes, why should we give you any extension when you are not clearly following any rules at all? Uh, of course, it's the traditional carrot and stick approach. But of course, as we've said, the mood music has changed on this. Rishi Sunak isn't as combative as Liz Truss or certainly as Boris Johnson was. We are hearing stuff that things are happening in the Northern Ireland agreement in and around talks with the EU and of course this caused the Brexiteers to completely lose their minds a couple of weeks ago when they feared that Sunak was going to do a Swiss style deal with the EU even now they are gearing up as they say to have a fight over the Brexit bill uh, to do with uh, you know actually changing things around Northern Ireland it, it, it could get very very messy indeed uh, very quickly but back to this. So the Trade and Cooperation Agreement has exempted all vehicles from rules stating that they must substantially be made in Britain or the bloc in order to qualify for the EU zero tariffs. This exemption will expire at the end of 2023, with the electric vehicles moving between Britain and the EU that fail to meet that criteria set out in the agreement forced to pay the 10% tariffs thereafter. This includes the batteries, with more than half of their value of the components required to originate from the EU or the UK to avoid this 10% levy. Most electric cars on sale today use batteries sourced from the Asian market, meaning that they will fail to adhere to the zero tariff requirements outlined by Brussels. And with few battery producing gigafactories in operation in Europe, currently none in the UK, this is likely to remain the case until later in the decade. And around a dozen battery factories are expected to open across Europe before 2030. 
In the UK, only one giga factory is currently in the process of construction, while others are facing very uncertain futures over the financial struggles. And we've talked about that before on this channel. But according to reports in the Financial Times, the automotive trade bodies, including the Society for Motor Manufacturers and Traders in the UK, have asked for the exemption for electric vehicles to be extended beyond the December 31st, 23 deadline to the lack of in, uh, due to the lack of unavailable indigenous batteries. If the extension is not granted, it would mean that vehicle manufacturers will face the 10% charge on tariffs on electric cars moving across the channel. These increases are almost certain to be passed on to consumers via higher pricing. This will likely lead to the delay in electric vehicles and from achieving price parity with the petrol and diesel equivalents within the next five years. While battery power cars remain at a premium over the comparable internal combustion engine alternative, in some cases up to £10,000 more, reports have suggested that prices will soften in the coming years, and of course electric vehicles will be cheaper to produce by 2027. Estimations uh, last year by the Bloomberg uh, NEF have strategic research business specialising in electric vehicle analysis say that manufacturing costs will be lower for the electric family cars for SUVs by 2026, with batteries, uh, super minis, and city cars being less expensive to make than the petrol or diesels in the following year. However, failure to extend this tariff and the trade uh, cooperation agreement would likely delay this price parity closer to 2030, when the UK's ban on sales of new petrol cars does come into force in Britain. Under this new agreement, in the order to qualify for the 0% tariffs from January 31st, at least 45% of the value of the electric cars must originate from the EU or the UK, and up to 50-60% of the batteries. Uh, Dr. Andrew Palmer, the CEO for Nissan and Aston Martin, tweeted last week, I have been warning that the rules of origin component of the Brexit trade deal would have devastating consequences for the auto industry. It seems those warnings haven't been heeded, and we are heading for a huge disruption in 2024. A great shame. And of course, what does this mean for Nissan? Nissan just might move. If that is the case, I would not be shocked if next year Nissan goes, well, we're ramping down production. And remember, Renault also holds significant interest in that factory as well. So they could very well likely go, well, we're moving this production back to France, which could then cause Nissan to do the same. And then, bang, it goes that factory. Even after all, that massive bribe that the government gave to Nissan as well in order to actually stay there. It really isn't looking good. So, coincidentally, construction of one of Britain's largest gigafactories did commence last week. Evasion ACS has started work on its plant near the Nissan UK production site in Sunderland, which is part of a wider £1 billion partnership with Nissan and the Sunderland City Council. However, battery production is not due to start until 2024. Meanwhile, the nation's long-run proposed first battery-making gigafactory is due to be built in Blythe in Northumberland, and has experienced financial issues in recent months. There has also been considerable concern over the future of British Volt's battery plant since the reports in November that it was on the verge of entering administration. It had been promised up to £100 million of funding by the government, but this has failed to meet the uh, stipulations agreed in the release of the cash. British Vault's short-term future was secured by a funding injection believed to be from an existing investor in Glencoe, but it is also thought that this could provide additional time to try and find a suitable buyer for the site. So, yeah, all in all... Um, not a good look, unfortunately, for uh, for the British cars. And certainly, if you happen to unwrap one today, uh, you might have been able to get yourself a good deal. Um, maybe. But, of course, achieving parity and, of course, the, the idea of, you know, banning the sale of, like, internal combustion engine cars, this coming into it uh, is going to cause some significant problems. Absolutely. I'd said for a while now, I had a friend who, is involved in sort of the, the second-hand vehicle market. And even before Brexit, him and other sort of second-hand vehicle people were running around trying to gather as many second-hand vehicles as they could because they predicted there would be a massive sale, which there has been, uh, increase in the sale of second-hand cars. And shockingly, that came true. So 
they're very happy currently in the second hand car market, but of course they know this as well is coming and they're looking to see if they can start to get some second hand electrical can electric car vehicles now as well. So yeah. Um still not some well good well i don't know depends what side you're on really but i suppose good slash bad news uh for brexit for christmas but there you go that is of course as always brexit so as always guys have a very happy and merry christmas enjoy the rest of your day drink your tur drink your turkeys <laughs> drink your <laughs> eat your turkeys drink your drinks etc etc and i hope you have an absolutely fantastic christmas day with all the frivolities that the day will bring so as always guys thank you very much for watching and of course we'll see you all very soon